Welcome to Iceland, a land where nature paints its own masterpiece. Born here, life is a journey shaped by the land itself. From the sizzling warmth of homemade kotsuba to the soothing lullaby sung to the endless daylight, Icelanders hold their traditions dear, passing them down through generations. Join us as we discover the life of someone born in this land of wonder in today's video. Most births in Iceland today take place in a healthcare setting, although some home births have become much more frequent in recent years. New mums and parents observe a tradition called runter, during which they take a walk around their town or village with their newborn to introduce the baby to the community. This tradition, believed to bring good luck and support to the new family, goes hand in hand with dietary recommendations for expecting mothers. Pregnant women in Iceland are advised to eat common types of fish found in the water surrounding Iceland, such as haddock, cod, flounder, catfish, monkfish, anglerfish, trout, and salmon. Beyond these traditions, the naming conventions also carry a unique significance. A person's last name indicates the first name of his or her father, or in some cases the mother. For example, if John Einarsson has a baby boy, his name would be Baby Johnson, son of John. However, if John has a baby girl, her name would be Baby John's daughter, daughter of John. This means that children of the same parents who are of different genders will usually have different surnames, which is unusual for most societies. Women also do not take their partner's names because that would render the naming system void since they cannot become sons of their father-in-law. Despite the widespread norm of Iceland's naming cultures, some families still have familial surnames. However, these are mostly Iceland families married to foreigners and people who still practice Danish culture from when Iceland was under Denmark's rule. However, the Icelanders are in no rush to name their children. Around the world, people announce their children's births using their given names. In Iceland, it will simply be, our girl was born this morning. She weighed 3.829 grams and was 49 centimeters long. Everyone is healthy and doing great. The name is not announced until the christening or the naming ceremony for those less religious. However, this ceremony can be held months after the baby's birth. Some say that this is why many Icelanders have nicknames that have nothing to do with their actual names, just something that stuck during the period that we waited for their real name. Legally, Icelandic parents have up to six months to register their baby's name. However, if they wait longer than that, they will actually get fined, about ISK 1,500 a day. Generally, a baby's name is not revealed until its official naming ceremony, even between family members. Until then, newborns are often called Drenger, boy, Stuka, girl, or Iskan, my love or sweetheart. There are strict rules to naming your newborn baby. Keeping with Icelandic tradition, if a name hasn't previously been used, it has to be submitted to the Icelandic naming committee for approval. The name may contain only letters from the Icelandic alphabet and must fit grammatically with the language. Shifting from naming to education, play school or leikskoli is non-compulsory education for those under the age of six and is the first step in the education system. Play is the aim for children of this age in Iceland. Time frames are usually flexible and teaching methods are indirect. Children learn primarily through play and are able to move freely around the room. Preschool in Iceland and is for children under the age of six. It is intended for all children regardless of physical or mental ability, cultural background, or religion. Although preschool is not mandatory, many children attend preschool from the time they are about 18 months until they begin primary school. Children attend preschool anywhere from 4 to 9.5 hours on weekdays. Parents can apply for preschool enrollment for their child with the municipality where the child's legal domicile is registered. Once enrollment is accepted, the parents create an attendance agreement with the school to determine the child's hours at the school. Icelanders also have some unique celebrations. Around late February to early March each year, Icelanders celebrate Boludigar, Boon Day, Sprengdigar, Shrove Tuesday, and Oskudigar, Ash Wednesday. Instead of Ash Wednesday being the start of Lent in Iceland, it marks the end of a three-day feast where Icelanders eat their weight in both sweet and savory goodies. On Bunday, children make traditional Bunday wands, which they then use to spank their parents into giving them creamy chocolate buns. One bun for each spank makes for a lot of sore adult behinds. Shrove Tuesday, a more literal translation would be eat till your birthday, brings copious amounts of salted meat and peas to counteract all the sugar from the day before. Third and last is Ash Wednesday, a kind of Icelandic Halloween. Children dress up in costumes and go into shops to sing for candy. 
As it turns out, our children have a strong work ethic, especially when it comes to candy. It is also tradition to make small pouches and sneakily hang them on people's backs without them noticing. Upper secondary education or Framhaltskoli, which literally means continued school, follows lower secondary education. These schools are also known as gymnasia in English. Horseback riding, fishing, dog sledding are the most popular activities children like doing in their spare time. Mani and Puk are two popular local games among children in Iceland. As the country is so small, children here tend to be way closer to their family and kin as compared to other countries. Icelandic youth are taught to be self-sufficient, and they are expected to clean their bedroom, change the linen, vacuum clean or wash the floors, do the laundry, prepare meals, and clean the kitchen after general use. The final level is higher education, or hashkoli, literally high school. There are eight such institutions in the country, most of which are run by the state. There is more gender equality than there is in many other countries. The open nature of the political system allows interested women to organize as a political party to pursue their interests in the parliament. There are women clergy. Fishing is largely in the hands of men, while women are more prominent in fish processing. Icelandic people are known to be warm and friendly, but even the most friendly people still need something to bond over. The most common road to friendship for Icelandic people is over a delicious and refreshing beer. When you visit, you will find it hard to believe that beer was actually once banned in the country between 1915 and 1989. But since then, the people of Iceland has made it their mission to make up for nearly a century of prohibition with some of the finest beers in the world. They've gone as far as having beer spas, where you can literally immerse yourself in Iceland's beer culture with an unlimited amount of beer and massages to calm your nerves. The dating culture in Iceland is quite different from other countries. It is more common for people to date around, and there is less emphasis on monogamy than in some other cultures. There is a relative lack of formal marriage, and out-of-wedlock births, 13 to 36 percent, have never been stigmatized. Women frequently have a child before they marry. Relationships in Iceland tend to be quite casual at the start, and Icelanders don't shy away from making efforts for people they are interested in. Teenagers usually tend to take their date out in the open in gardens, and mostly in cafes and bars. This can be seen as both good and bad. On the one hand, it means that being casual with someone on the first date is not necessarily frowned upon, but on the other hand, it does mean that people are less likely to be exclusive right away. If someone offers you a piece of the licorice candy opal, Icelandic licorice is delicious, this is an undisputed fact. Make sure you take two pieces, unless you want to be a single for the rest of your life. Well, that's what people in Iceland believe. Winning in cards can also mean that you will have bad luck when it comes to love, or at least that's how you shame your opponent when they beat you at the game. We say, lucky in cards, unlucky in love. The third thing is when you raise your glass to toast your fellow diners, you'd better look them in the eye or your love life will suffer. With all these romantic perils, it's no wonder there's only 360,000 of Icelanders in the country. But romance and customs go further than that. Another beautiful tradition is the pre-wedding tradition. In Iceland, it is customary for the bride's family to host a dinner for the groom's family prior to the wedding day. This tradition is called Kvoldmatur and involves both families gathering together in celebration of their union. During this time, they exchange gifts and blessings. In an Iceland wedding, the couple don't usually exchange personal vows. Instead, the minister takes the lead and asks the couple yes-no questions. If the ceremony is a humanist one, the minister takes it upon themselves to make a few jokes. Additionally, in traditional Icelandic weddings, the guests are seated by gender. The men will sit on the groom's side and the women on the bride's side. Some Icelanders today choose an Asatru wedding. Asatru is the Old Norse Viking religion. This involves the couple sipping from a drinking horn and having a pagan priest bless their union. The groom also presents his wife with a sword. Yet another typical Icelandic day, Husband's Day or Bandadagur, is traditionally a day for the eldest man in the house to welcome in the month of Thori, which is the fourth month on the Old Norse calendar. Husband's Day historically involves some unusual routines. Men were encouraged to prove their toughness on this wintry holiday by hopping through the house dressed in a shirt and only one pant leg as the other leg trails behind him. Wife's Day, or Kanagdur, is also celebrated by the close of the month of Thori, kicking off the other harsh wintry month of Goa. It's believed that Icelandic people used to celebrate the first day of each month prior to Christian conversion. Family in Iceland is especially important, as the country is so small. 
Icelandic families are often larger than other northern European countries. Extended family members usually don't live together, but uncles, aunts, and grandparents often help with children. Since most people in Iceland have been there for a very long time, charting family history is a popular hobby for many Icelanders. Icelanders eat a lot of seafood, cheese, and skur, the local version of yogurt. The basics of the Icelandic diet include fish, lamb, and dairy products. A popular dish is hankyot, smoked mutton, their traditional meal on Christmas Day. Boiled potatoes accompany most meals. Thanks to Iceland's many greenhouses, a wide range of fresh fruits and vegetables are also available. The writer Haldor Laxness once observed that life is saltfish. During some of the events inspired by the romantic folkloric revival, people consumed Brennivin, an alcoholic beverage called Black Death, along with fermented shark meat and smoked lamb, which is served at festive occasions. In spite of being a rather casual society, there are a lot of rigidly upheld traditions in Iceland, especially when it comes to food. The most prominent one of these is the Porablat, Thoroblat. The Old Norse month of Pori is celebrated throughout Iceland in January and February. This is a time when families or even whole counties get together and eat traditionally prepared food like boiled sheep's head, pickled ram's testicles, and fermented shark. There is one phone book in Iceland and it is for the entire country. It's two inches thick and alphabetizes everyone by their first name. If there are multiple people with the same first, middle, and last name, a very common occurrence, their profession is listed to distinguish between people. Iceland is a very expensive country, and in order to maintain high living standards, Icelanders are used to working long hours. Men work 47 hours a week on average and women 37 hours. Icelanders tend to complain if their commute passes the 30-minute mark, so travel times are very reasonable relative to much of the world. In the Reykjavik vicinity, there are many public bus lines. Generally, Icelandic business hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and during the summer months, June, July, and August, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Icelandic business culture is not very hierarchical, and no matter where you work in the company, everyone is treated equally. Because of the patronymic naming system, everyone is addressed by their first name, which makes the business environment less formal than elsewhere. Networking is relatively easy since the population is so small. Do you have a new idea and want to talk to a particular person? More than likely, you probably work with someone who can connect you to them. Meetings tend to be brief and to the point, with an honest conversation about what needs to happen next. Culturally, this can take some getting used to, but makes for efficient meetings. Many meetings also occur in a casual atmosphere, over lunch or coffee. Every town in Iceland has at least one swimming pool. This is not a bathhouse. This is where you get your gossip sitting in a warm pot full of people. You swim, you stretch, you go into a steam bath, kind of like a sauna, except you can't see anything as it is very hot steam. Next, let's talk about old age in Iceland. The retirement age here is different than in other countries in Europe. While in Europe you are already considered as senior when you are over 65 years old, in Iceland you are retired at 67 years old. Senior citizens in Iceland are given a pension by the state and, frequently, payments from a pension fund. The amount depends on how long they have lived in the country and their previous income. Most elderly people live in their homes as long as they can, or their entire lives. Many will receive support from their municipality, that is, with cleaning, preparing meals, drug dosages, or help bathing, or they take advantage of leisure activities for senior citizens. Associations for elderly citizens around Iceland work towards the general interest of the elderly, and they organize social activities, recreational activities, learning courses, and cultural events. The associations are open to all who are 60 years and older, and to their spouses too, even if they are younger. People will pay for a portion of the cost themselves. Nursing homes are for senior citizens who are unable to live at home. The elderly will share in the cost of stay at the nursing home. Icelandic funerals are ceremonies that are largely shaped by the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Iceland, the largest Christian organization in Iceland. However, customs may vary depending on the religious group. Traditions such as death announcements in national Icelandic newspapers and wakes are common in Iceland. The ritual of embalming is not performed, and the burial process is usually completed within eight days. Cremations have not been common in Iceland burial history, but are gaining popularity. Christian funeral practices generally follow the Icelandic church's liturgy book. The funeral is held in a church and performed by a priest. After the ceremony, the coffin is either taken to the cemetery to be buried or the crematorium to be cremated. Once buried, wreaths, flowers, and a wooden cross can be placed on the grave. 
Pagan funeral practices reflect the deep respect for nature. They are usually held outdoors with the ceremony performed by a goti. Readings from the Edda or other appropriate literature are included. It is customary to announce death through an obituary in a national Icelandic newspaper. Obituaries in Iceland are similar to death notices in European and American newspapers in that they can be about anyone and are written by the acquaintances or family of the deceased. These are not written by journalists or reserved for the most important figures in society. One particular newspaper, Morgenblad, is often read solely for the obituaries, which is considered a cultural institution. So friends, that's it for today's video. Which country do you want us to cover next? Let us know in the comments. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to our channel.